Next, NASA says its Voyager 1 probe, the most distant human-made object in the universe, is sending usable information to Earth again after months of spouting gibberish. The spaceship left the solar system in 2012 and is currently more than 15 billion miles from Earth. Well, Dr Jennifer Millard is an astronomer at Fifth Star Labs, joining us from Barry in Wales. Thank you very much for coming on the programme. Yeah, very happy to. I'm glad it's good news. It is good news. So talk us through, first of all, I suppose, what was going wrong? So this all began way back in November when, as you say, the craft just wasn't sending back anything that we could unravel back on Earth. It was all nonsense. And it seems to be a hardware problem. One of the chips on board and part of the flight data subsystem, so one of the computers on board, has broken. And, you know, it's not surprising for something that's four and a half. The most distant spacecraft humanity has ever built a silent metal relic drifting through the darkness 45 years after its launch suddenly looks back, metaphorically speaking, and reveals something that forces scientists to reconsider everything they thought they knew about the edge of our solar system. It is a machine older than the internet, older than GPS, and older than the world most of us grew up in. Still alive, still whispering data across billions of miles through technology less advanced than a cassette player, it is somehow delivering a discovery so unsettling that even NASA's most seasoned researchers were caught off guard. What did Voyager 1 find out there beyond the sun's reach, beyond the boundary of the solar wind, beyond the comfort of any human-made model? Tonight, we dive into the frightening truth hiding in Voyager 1's latest transmissions. A discovery from the darkness humanity was never meant to enter. Voyager 1 was never supposed to live long enough to see the edge of the solar system, let alone cross it. When NASA launched Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 back in 1977, the mission was designed to last just four years, long enough to perform flybys of Jupiter and Saturn. Yet, more than 45 years later, the spacecraft is still communicating, still operating instruments, and still sending data across a gulf of space so large that each signal takes over 18 hours to return home. And what's even more incredible is the absurd simplicity of the hardware. 69 kilobytes of memory, eight track tape recorders, a transmitter weaker than a refrigerator light bulb, and navigation based on 1,970 seconds onboard intelligence. The fact that this machine is still alive is already astonishing, but what it just revealed makes its endurance seem almost prophetic. Long before Voyager made history, a single engineer with a pencil changed everything. In 1965, Gary Flandro discovered that during the late 1,970 seconds and early 1,000, 980 seconds, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune would align in such a rare gravitational configuration that a spacecraft could sling from one to the next, stealing momentum like grabbing onto a cosmic rope. This celestial alignment only happens once every 176 years. Without it, Voyager would never have reached the outer planets in time, and it would never have made the discoveries that led it to the edge of the unknown. NASA moved fast, launching both spacecraft within 15 days of each other. They had no idea that these probes would someday exit the solar system entirely, entering a realm no human instrument had ever reached. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 quickly proved that NASA had underestimated them. They captured eruptions on Jupiter's moons, revealed that icy worlds like Enceladus and Triton were far more dynamic than imagined and showed that the giant planets were not quiet, predictable spheres, but chaotic laboratories of storms, radiation, magnetism, and geological activity. Voyager 2 alone became the only spacecraft in history to visit Uranus and Neptune up close. These early discoveries were thrilling, but they were nothing compared to the revelations waiting at the boundary separating the solar system from interstellar space. As Voyager 1 continued outward past the planets, Scientists expected to see a clear change in the environment as the spacecraft approached the heliopause, the outer edge of the sun's influence. Models predicted a shift in magnetic field orientation, an increase in interstellar plasma density, and spikes in galactic cosmic rays. But for years, Voyager didn't report any of this. It drifted through regions that should have shown strong evidence of transition, yet nothing matched expectations. It was as if the solar system refused to let Voyager go, or worse, 
as if our understanding of the boundary was simply wrong. By 2012, Voyager 1 was supposed to cross the heliopause, but when it finally transmitted signs of increased plasma density, a clear indicator, it also sent back something profoundly confusing. The magnetic field direction didn't change. Scientists expected the interstellar magnetic field to differ from the sun's, but instead, the readings matched perfectly. It was as if Voyager had moved into a new region without the field redirecting at all, contradicting decades of theoretical predictions. This was the first major clue that something was deeply misunderstood about our solar system's true edge. On August 25th, 2012, Voyager 1 officially entered interstellar space. It should have felt like crossing a border like stepping into a new cosmic country. Instead, the spacecraft encountered a region where some measurements confirmed interstellar conditions, while others looked strangely solar in nature. Plasma density skyrocketed as expected, but the magnetic field orientation did not shift. This created a bizarre contradiction. Voyager appeared to be both inside and outside the solar system simultaneously. It was the first sign that the boundary between worlds is not a clean line, but a turbulent, unknowable frontier. In 2018, Voyager 2 crossed the heliopause at almost the exact same distance, 120 astronomical units, and once again, the magnetic field didn't change direction. Two spacecraft, six years apart, both contradicting decades of heliospheric models. If the theories were correct, the probe should have detected different magnetic field orientations, but both recorded the same one. This repetition of the anomaly transformed a single puzzle into a terrifying possibility. What if our entire model of the solar system's boundary is flawed? Heliospheric models predicted that the size of the heliopause should change dramatically with the sun's 11-year activity cycle, shrinking and expanding like a breathing membrane. But Voyager's data shows that the heliopause wasn't where it was supposed to be. In fact, the solar wind was strongest when Voyager 2 reached it, meaning the heliopause should have been farther out, not at the same distance as Voyager 1 saw years earlier. This is another contradiction pointing toward a terrifying reality. We don't know how the boundary of our solar system actually works. Some scientists now argue that despite the plasma density increase, Voyager might still be inside the heliosphere, trapped in a turbulent transition region that behaves unpredictably. Others insist the spacecraft is definitely in interstellar space. But the disagreement highlights something uncomfortable. Voyager is exploring a region so poorly understood that even experts cannot agree on where the solar system ends. This is the scientific equivalent of sending a submarine to the ocean floor, only to discover the sea floor doesn't exist where you expected. Researchers describe the situation with a haunting analogy. Trying to understand the heliopause from inside the solar system is like being a goldfish trying to describe the shape of its bowl. Voyager is giving us hints, fragments, and contradictions, but until we observe from the outside looking in, the picture will always be incomplete. This is why many scientists argue that only a dedicated interstellar probe sent specifically to exit the heliosphere can finally resolve the mystery. But Voyager is already out there, drifting without the instruments needed to fully answer the question. Voyager's instruments are fragile, old, and powered by heaters and plutonium sources now far past their expected limits. Every year, the probes lose about 4 watts of power, forcing NASA to turn off systems one by one. But even after shutting off heaters meant to keep detectors warm, the instruments refuse to die. The cosmic ray detector, exposed to temperatures far below its tested range, kept functioning. It's as if Voyager's hardware has become something more than the sum of its parts, a survivor at the edge of existence. Eventually, NASA will have to shut down nearly everything, leaving only the magnetometer and plasma science instrument alive, warmed only by the spacecraft's own computers. These will be the last senses Voyager carries into the void. When those go dark, humanity will lose its farthest window into the cosmos. And yet, until that moment, Voyager continues to feed us the data that has already upended our entire understanding of the solar system's structure. If nothing stops it, Voyager will drift silently for thousands of years. In 16,700 years, it will pass by Proxima Centauri. In millions of years, it will continue orbiting the Milky Way as a cold, dead symbol of humanity long after our civilization, our cities, and possibly even our species are gone.
Voyager is not just a spacecraft. It is a message in a bottle thrown into a cosmic ocean, destined to outlive everything we know. The sun will die someday. The planets will be swallowed or frozen. The heliosphere will vanish into interstellar space. Yet, Voyager will still be there unchanged, drifting through the galaxy. Long after Earth is gone, long after the last human voice has faded, Voyager 1 will still be silently carrying our story. This is both beautiful and terrifying, a machine that outlives its makers by millions of years, a witness to a universe that won't remember we were ever here. The real shock is not just that Voyager crossed into the unknown, it's that what it found there doesn't match any model humanity has ever created. Plasma behaves differently. Magnetic fields refuse to shift. Cosmic rays spike without clear patterns. The transition between solar space and interstellar space is not a clean break, but a chaotic frontier unlike anything predicted. Voyager turned back metaphorically through its data, forcing scientists to reconsider everything. The terror is not danger. It's ignorance. The universe is not structured the way we thought. Voyager 1's discovery is frightening because it reveals not a threat, but a truth. The boundary of our solar system is not what we believed. It is stranger, more chaotic, more complex, and far less understood. This ancient spacecraft running on fading heat and primitive code has shown us that the universe refuses to fit inside our models. And that means the next generation of explorers will face a cosmos more mysterious than we ever imagined. As scientists dig deeper into Voyager's magnetic field readings, the data becomes increasingly unsettling. The spacecraft should have detected a clear shift when leaving the sun's magnetic influence and entering the domain shaped by other stars. Yet, both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 reported no such change, a result that throws decades of heliophysical theory into confusion. The expectation was simple. As the probes crossed the heliopause, the sun's magnetic lines would give way to the interstellar field, marking a kind of cosmic border crossing. But instead of the predicted shift, the readings remained eerily similar, almost as if the universe refused to cooperate with our models, or as if Voyager had stepped into a region between realities where no clean separation exists. This is a terrifying prospect because it means that the structure of our solar system's outer shell might be far more chaotic, fluid, or intertwined with interstellar space than anyone imagined. Scientists are now forced to ask whether the heliopause is not a boundary at all, but a turbulent blend of forces we barely understand, a cosmic fog rather than a door. Voyager's findings reveal that the edge of the solar system is not a clean, quiet place, but a chaotic battlefield where solar wind crashes into the interstellar medium, creating a region full of unexpected density changes, particle turbulence, and magnetic distortions that no model predicted. Instead of a stable frontier dividing one environment from another, the spacecraft encountered a zone where conditions fluctuate unpredictably, a region shaped by violent interactions between charged particles streaming from the sun and the thin, ionized gases drifting between stars. Scientists expected this zone to behave according to long-established simulations, but Voyager's data shows a mismatch so severe that it implies something fundamental is missing from our understanding. The magnetic field remains strangely consistent, plasma density increases dramatically, and cosmic rays spike in ways that do not align with models. And yet, nothing behaves in a way that cleanly marks the transition. It is as if Voyager entered a liminal region shaped by forces not yet accounted for a cosmic shoreline where waves from two different oceans crash into each other. Every year, Voyager loses around 4 watts of power, a slow, fading heartbeat, that forces NASA to make painful choices about which instruments can live and which must be shut down forever. These decisions become more critical as the spacecraft drifts deeper into the interstellar darkness. The heaters meant to protect sensitive components have already been shut off, yet the instruments continue to operate far below their tested temperature limits, defying engineering expectations. But the clock is ticking. Eventually, even the magnetometer and the plasma science instrument the last surviving sensors located inside the spacecraft's warmed body will no longer have enough electricity to function. Voyager's death is not expected to come from collision or radiation, but from the quiet dimming of its plutonium power source. And once that moment arrives, humanity will lose its only direct window into the interstellar space that surrounds us.
The terrifying part is that Voyager still has stories left to tell and mysteries still unfolding, but soon its voice will fall silent, leaving us with unanswered questions about the region it was just beginning to reveal. What happens after Voyager goes silent is both haunting and poetic. The spacecraft will continue traveling through the Milky Way long after the sun burns out, long after Earth ceases to exist, and long after humanity is gone. Voyager is destined to become a ghost wandering between stars, still carrying its golden record our message to civilizations we may never meet and orbiting the galaxy for millions, perhaps billions, of years. In 16,700 years, it will pass by Proxima Centauri. After that, it will drift into endless loops around the galactic center, untouched, unaltered, unbroken. The terrifying discovery Voyager made about the boundary of our solar system may someday be forgotten by the species that created it, but the probe itself will continue its journey, outliving every human achievement, every civilization, and every trace of our existence. In this sense, Voyager is not just a machine, it is humanity's last survivor in a universe that will eventually erase us, yet somehow preserve this tiny relic as a silent witness to what we once were. Now, standing at the end of this journey through decades of engineering, bravery, cosmic coincidence, and the relentless drift into the unknown, the true weight of Voyager's discovery becomes impossible to ignore. Because what this ancient spacecraft revealed is not a threat from outside, but a revelation about ourselves and our profound misunderstanding of the universe that surrounds us. Voyager crossed the edge of the solar system expecting a clean break, a moment when the sun's influence surrendered to the wider galaxy. Yet, instead, it found a boundary that refuses to behave like a boundary at all. A region where magnetic fields do not shift as predicted, where plasma density rises, but the field orientation remains eerily the same, where the solar wind and interstellar medium collide, not in an orderly frontier, but in a turbulent sea of contradictions. This is the terrifying part. The edge of our solar system is not what we thought. Our models were wrong. Our predictions were wrong. And the universe is far stranger, more chaotic, and more unpredictable than the most seasoned scientists dared to imagine. Voyager with its fading power supply and technology, older than most of the world's population, forced humanity to confront a truth we were never fully prepared to hear, that we are still blind to the real shape of the cosmic ocean we live in. Yet, despite the fear and uncertainty this discovery evokes, it is also a reminder of something profoundly human. Because even as its instruments dim, even as NASA shuts down heaters and sacrifices systems to preserve just a few final sensors, Voyager continues to speak to us, sending whispers from a frontier no other machine has ever crossed. Long after its voice falls silent, long after it drifts past Proxima Centauri in 17,000 years, and long after the sun itself fades, Voyager will still be out there, carrying the story of a species that dared to explore beyond its cradle. It will never know that it made us rewrite the edge of our reality, but the discovery will remain echoing across scientific generations and reminding us that the universe will always be bigger, darker, stranger, and more wondrous than we imagine. Voyager didn't just turn back with a terrifying discovery. It turned back and proved that the greatest danger in the cosmos is assuming we already understand it.